What's good, Josh? Your boy Ross back at it again with another video. So we're gonna check out 10 most controversial wrestling moments of 2022, man. This year for wrestling has probably been the craziest it's, it's ever been in our lifetime, bro. I mean, I don't even know how to put put it into words. The crazy stuff that's happened this year, just in wrestling in general. The biggest thing, probably and most noticeably, is Vince McMahon retiring from his day-to-day -day duties no one ever thought we would see that willingly we thought he would probably end up dying doing his day-to-day -day duties being head of creative in wwe but no he was forced to step down because uh you know what i'm saying he was doing some some naughty naughty things back in the day and it caught up to him so that's just probably one of the most craziest like notable things that's happened this year in wrestling and there's some other crazy notable notable things that has happened as well and we're gonna check that out on this list appreciate all the love and support you guys are showing on the channel man let's get right into this bad boy controversy creates cash so says wcw head honcho eric bischoff but from my experience with the year of our lord 2022 controversy is bloody exhausting at every turn this year, there has been something else coming up to keep the wrestling business on its toes, and I think we can all agree that what the wrestling business needs is a nice, peaceful 2023. Just as we wanted 2022 to be the relaxing mm -hmm. year of normalcy after 2021 and 2020, and man, 2019 was nuts too. Oh God, we're just gonna keep getting more and more ridiculousness every time we take a trip around the sun until the cosmic death of the universe comes for us all, aren't we? <laughs> well, that seems like a very cheery way to kick off the most wonderful time of the year. Nothing says holiday spirit quite like controversy. Yeah. I'm Tempest hailing from Parts Unknown, and these are the 10 most controversial wrestling moments of 2022. But before we get on with our list, make sure, of course, that you like this video, subscribe. I'm willing to bet the Vince McMahon one has to be number one. There's nothing that was more bigger than Vince McMahon stepping down. In my opinion, I think that was the biggest wrestling news that shocked the world was Vince McMahon retiring. That's just my personal opinion. It has to be number one. Right, but enable notifications to always on so you never miss a fun list just like it and make sure to watch survival series here on parts fun known we may or may not have another episode coming soon so you better get caught up number 10 brian kendrick says dumb sh hmm. all elite wrestling has had more than its fair share of controversial moments throughout 2022 this is most true. of which we'll get to don't you worry oh yeah but one of the earliest moments on this list was one aew was actually able to get out in front of Following the Brian Kendrick's departure from WWE as a producer in February, he was immediately announced for a match on AEW Dynamite with the this. recently returned John Moxley. That match, however, never took place as after it was announced, old clips of Kendrick saying really dumb sh** were surfaced. Some of it was just dumb sh** of the regular variety. The moon being a space station, the <laughs> sun not being hot, the world being run by a race of lizards, all harmless yet terribly frightening nonsense. The dumb sh** like denying the existence of the 2012 Sandy Hook school shooting and saying the number of Jewish people killed during the Holocaust was exaggerated, however, considerably yeah. more dumb. These old quotes got the Kendrick match removed from Dynamite and he hasn't wrestled since. Damn. He was brought in by WWE to produce Ronda Rousey's match at Survivor Series upon her request as Kendrick was her former trainer, but he was not rehired. Number Damn. nine, Tyrus wins the NWA ch Damn, bro. <laughs> <laughs> you lost me at the sun's not hot. You 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 build a rocket ship or have Elon Musk send you on a rocket ship and just send you straight to the sun. Let me know how that goes out for you. Championship. If controversy creates cash, Billy Corgan and the NWA certainly wanted to test that theory in 2022. The NWA is probably the deadest brand going in wrestling and <laughs> has been for most of the last three decades. While they did have a few strands of goodwill with the all-female Empower event, they have since done everything in their NWA power to destroy that goodwill with asinine quotes and decisions like this. While other promotions continue to showcase many of the best young stars of the independent scene, and many of the top promotions continue to put on the kind of match that brings in the big gates and buy rates, the NWA has done neither. Instead, <laughs> promoting Tyrus versus Trevor Murdoch versus Matt Cardona for their Hard Times pay-per-view in November. Worse still, in the tone-deaf booking decision of the year, the NWA decided notable prick Tyrus was their top choice to represent the company. Naturally, Corgan insisted it was not Tyrus. Wasn't he, uh, he was, um... He was in WWE. I forgot 
what horrible gimmick he was under where he would dance to the ring. I believe Naomi uh, they were, uh, was aligned with him. I think they were. It was her Naomi and somebody else, the, the Funkadactyls or some stupid shit. Y'all know what I'm talking about. He used to dance in the ring. He was a big guy. He would wrestle. He would dance to the ring. I forgot his name. Y'all, y'all know what it is. I believe that's him. Y'all, y'all know exactly what I'm talking about. I just can't, can't even remember his name. It's probably a good reason for him for me to not remember what his gimmick was back then. Iris's exposure on Fox News that got him the push, but rather his wrestling ability. There we go. Editor, insert the clip of Tyrus falling on his old unathletic ass here, please. Harley Race, Terry Funk, Dusty Rhodes, and Tyrus's untalented ass. Number eight, <laughs> Jonathan Gresham quits Ring of Honor. There are varying levels of controversy when looking at those who left AEW in 2022. On one end, you have Cody Rhodes, who, while shocking, uncontroversially worked without a contract and put over a young star on the way out before making his way to WWE. On that, the other end, you have the madness true. in September that could have convinced Tony Khan not to long-term book ever again, and then you have Jonathan Gresham right in the middle. Gresham was the man who won the interim ROH World Championship at Final Battle 2021 before signing on to AEW's version of Ring of Honor, unifying the titles with Bandito's championship at Supercard of Honor. Unfortunately, we saw very little of Gresham in AEW. A couple of title defenses against Dalton Castle and Lee Moriarty aside, he hadn't done much and when asked to drop the title to Claudio Castagnoli in the opening match of Death Before Dishonor, he promptly had a heated discussion with Tony Khan over how he had been treated and quit the company. He still did the job, losing to Castagnoli at the show, but has not been seen in ROH or AEW since, Damn. only making sporadic appearances on the independents, which is a shame because a man as talented as Gresham deserves to be showcased on the biggest stage possible. Damn, that sucks. Number seven, Sammy Guevara keeps getting in fights. Oh, yeah. Sammy Guevara sure has caught the brunt of the heat from fans over his backstage mm -hmm. scuffles this year. This First, he had his true. altercation with Eddie Kingston, which put a stop to their plan match at All Out, an altercation that got Kingston suspended as he pie-faced Sammy after Sammy reportedly blew blew off Kingston's taking issue with one of Sammy's promos calling him a fat piece of shit. Eddie has since admitted to being at fault for this, but that doesn't mean Sammy hasn't been hated on vociferously since then. Mm -hmm. Then you get the two for one deal on Sammy Guevara fights as just a couple of months later, you had another backstage dust up, this time between Sammy and Andrade El Idolo. Yep. This came after Andrade made a number of comments about wanting out of AEW and was prepared to fight Sammy at Dynamite. Dynamite came, and somehow Andrade and Sammy were allowed to be within an arm's reach of each other, evident by Andrade punching Sammy and getting himself suspended. Again, <laughs> that night saw Sammy on the receiving end of the heavy heat from the crowd, even though the accounts of what happened said Sammy was not involved in the violence. Number six, Shane McMahon. Got I think S Sammy, he, he he's playing into it. He he's coming off like a pretentious asshole. The crowd doesn't they they the crowd can't stand his real life relationship with him and his girl and them always kissing. He just plays into it. You know, I don't I don't think he's probably a bad, you know, bad person. You know, I would I would hope not. But I think he just plays into the altercations he get into. He doesn't really care. It, it, it overall it helps in his gimmick, like the character he's trying to portray, just this asshole that you just want to fight and just want to punch he, like sammy has a punchable face he's one of those people when we see him like bro i just want to punch you that's sammy and i i think that works for him hopefully going into 2023 he doesn't have any more issues backstage wise that the public hears about granted it's kind of hard to hide things nowadays but i would hope that's the case going forward that's fired ah yes the most notable instance of a mcmahon leaving wwe this year it had been since WrestleMania 37 that we had seen the tennis shoe wearing thumb son of Vince McMahon, but Shane finally made his return to WWE in the Royal mm -hmm. Rumble match. Finally is a word to be used loosely because yeah. I don't think anyone was particularly awaiting Shane's return with no. bated breath, least of all were those involved in the match. No. Shane reportedly made such a kerfuffle trying to have the Royal Rumble be about himself and not the 27 actual wrestlers and two celebrities involved in the match, and he angered a number of those involved, including Brock Lesnar, who is about as much fun to anger as a hornet's nest. Shane was so insistent on seeing through his ideas for the match that were described as devoid of logic that Vince saw to it that he was removed from the company immediately after, saying Shane would never get another pop in WWE as long as he was there. Damn. He's not anymore, but yeah. I don't think Shane is likely to be the next of Triple H's rehires. No. Number five, Kota Ibushi's accusations. 
Well, here's a tricky one. Kota Ibushi is best known to fans for being one of the most gifted performers in the world, having won nearly every championship in New Japan Pro Wrestling, including two straight G1 climaxes, and also he was Kenny Omega's lover. It has been a while since we've seen the Golden Star in the ring, as he's yet to return from a particularly nasty shoulder injury he suffered in his match with Kazuchika Okada in the final of the G1 Climax in 2021. However, his 2022 was notable for another reason, as the typically quiet and reserved Ibushi took to Twitter to call out New Japan management for sexual harassment and abuse of power. Oh. Things have been incredibly quiet on this front since the comments were made back in the spring, but New Japan did make a public apology to Ibushi with company president Takami Obari saying they've worked to have an open discussion with Ibushi. Reports said Gato was working to smooth things over between the two sides, but oh, what a tricky situation this all is. Ibushi did pose for a picture over a lovely meal with his ex in September, but otherwise <laughs> we have no idea when we might see Ibushi in the ring again. Hopefully, it's soon. Not with his ex. That's Naomi funny. and Sasha Banks walk out. This was Sasha a big, Banks being big story passed over too. For Ronda Rousey, resulting in Banks walking out of WWE for the remainder of 2022, is the biggest unforced error of the wrestling year. Yeah. Sasha Banks and Naomi won the WWE Women's Tag Team Championship at WrestleMania, but their reign did not last long at all. The tag belts were about as prestigious as the Quizlemania Tag Team Championship at that point, Facts. with years of shoddy booking detracting heavily from the excitement that the belts started with. One might think putting the titles on two stars like Sasha and Naomi might change that outlook, but one might be totally wrong. Instead, the reported plan after WrestleMania was for Sasha Banks and Naomi to both lose to SmackDown Women's Champion Ronda Rousey in separate singles matches, not content to have themselves and their title reign devalued when they were doing their best to make the most out of it. They walked out of the May 16th episode of Raw, just in time for the WWE commentators to call them unprofessional on air. Mm -hmm. There have been conflicting reports about the actual status of Sasha and Naomi since then, with some saying they've been released and others denying that being the case. And now with those in power at WWE no longer being in power, every big show will in some way feature predictions from fans saying this is finally when Sasha and Naomi will be back. Royal Rumble 2023. Yep, that's, that's literally every pay-per-view now. It's, oh, this is when Sasha's coming back. This is when Naomi coming back. We don't know. Maybe she is done. Maybe, maybe she is actually done with wrestling. Maybe Naomi's doing other things, not really worried about coming back to wrestling. Who knows? Who knows, man? This this will be an interesting thing. I'm sure they've had conversations with Triple H. I know she was very close with Triple H more than anything from what, uh, you know, people have said and just reports. So I'm sure they've had conversations. It's just we don't know when. If she does come back, oh, best believe they will, she will, they will probably be featured in a high-profile situation, for sure. It's not even a question. But the question is, Will it happen? We'll see. Only time will tell. But this was definitely a noticeable news story for 2022. Number three, MJF's pipe bomb. Oh, of course. MJF's pipe bomb is an oversimplification. MJF is this generation's Brian Pillman. Outside of the actual Brian Pillman of this generation, Brian Pillman. But in MJF's case, he is the only one in on the work and no one else really knows for sure. Facts. This all started with MJF's backstage blow up with the leader of the TK crew, Tony Khan, with MJF reportedly upset about not being given a raise despite his impeccable work. This rift between the two sides built until MJF nearly no-showed his match with Wardlow at AEW Double or Nothing, with a plane ticket being bought to take MJF home from Vegas. MJF did the match, getting squashed by Wardlow, mm -hmm. but then Wednesday came and AEW put a microphone in MJF's hand. He said a lot of stuff, Whoop. including f He called Tony Khan a f mark before the show <laughs> cut to commercial. It was a whole ordeal, and boy, ordeal is a word coming up a lot in this one, with MJF only returning to AEW at All Out when everything in the company finally got smoothed out. Oh, wait a minute. No. Number two? <laughs> when I say, once again... That pipe bomb, MJF's pipe bomb, will ill forever. It's it's it will live in infamy. It will live in uh I can't even say the word. It'll live in the minds of all of us that were able to see this um forever, bro. It's up there with the CM Punk pipe bomb many years ago. This is something we'll go back and watch over and over and over because it was so legendary. It was so good, and this is why he deserves to be champ. And uh, hopefully they uh, continue to book him correctly, and hopefully he's able to have a, a meaningful title reign for AEW because God knows they need it. And, uh, you know, it's, it's he, he 
he has it, bro. He he gets wrestling. He is the best thing in AEW, in my personal opinion. The best thing they got going right now. That's just my personal opinion on it. But number two, of course, had to be this. We're all out. I don't think anybody heard about this story. We didn't do any coverage of it. CM Punk's AEW return didn't seem like it could be going any better up to the point he won the AEW World Championship at Double or Nothing. And then he broke his foot and AEW went to hell. He returned from his injury and immediately shot on Hangman Page in the ring, which set off a bunch of alarms, and then All Out happened, and it seemed to go all right, with Punk winning back the AEW World title from Jon Moxley, and then Brawl Out happened. CM Punk dropped his gripe bomb, tearing apart the Elite, Hangman Page, and Colt Cabana in one long prepared tirade. Yeah. The Elite didn't like this and went to Punk's locker room where they all talked out their differences like gentlemen nope. and continued on their way. Sorry, that was from an alternate universe where Tempest is allowed to have what he wants. Rather, in this <laughs> universe we know and are forced to exist in, CM Punk, Ace <laughs> Steel, and the Elite oh all had God. a good old-fashioned Donnybrook match in the locker room, <laughs> a brawl that saw AEW launch an investigation into the matter and suspend all of those who were involved which was very annoying considering four of them had just won belts on that very same show. Yeah. Good to get you all caught up on that little snippet of news I'm sure you all missed. And number one. Yeah, man. That, it was, I think the plans was originally CM Punk was supposed to drop it, drop the title to MJF. And I think that would have been fantastic. That story would have, I'm getting goosebumps thinking about it. That story would have been great. Because guess what? MJF was super over. He was super hot at this point. He dropped arguably one of the best promos of all time. They could have led up into that. CM Punk could have been like, yeah, what you said was very, you know, saying very passionate. Sounds like someone I know, you know, that did it many years before you. You remind me of that guy. It, like, it's pretty much the passing of the torch. MJF looked up to CM Punk. And then CM Punk is the person that ends up dropping the title to MJF, making him even a bigger star. Oh, man. That's what should have happened. But it didn't. All because tempers and egos got the best of people. And now look where we're at. So, yeah, man. And, of course, number one, I, I called it. It has to be Vince McMahon retiring. Come on now. Vince McMahon. Vince McMahon is the most successful wrestling promoter in the history of the world. He is also someone who was exposed for having allegedly made a series of hush money payments to cover up multiple incidents of sexual misconduct. Yep. Both of those statements are true, and I know which one I think is more important. In April, the Wall Street Journal, a big boy news publication, revealed in an investigation that McMahon had made a $3 million hush money settlement over an alleged affair with a former employee. McMahon stepped down as the CEO and chairman of WWE, but kept his role overseeing creative. So yep. optically for fans, very little had changed. Mm-hmm. That would not last, however, nope. as that $3 million settlement only grew as they kept digging, resulting in multiple settlements made relating mm-hmm. to misconduct claims against McMahon and John Laurinaitis, which by the end totaled $12 million being unearthed. McMahon finally announced his retirement on July 22nd while we were at a party. Look at our shocked faces. More seriously, (laughs) Vince McMahon leaving WWE is the biggest wrestling news story that didn't involve a death, maybe ever. We never thought it would happen, but boy, it sure did. F*** Vince McMahon, hold bad people accountable for the bad things they do. Merry (laughs) Christmas! And that's our list. (laughs) I said, fuck Vince McMahon. (laughs) I love you, man. (laughs) He said, fuck that guy. (laughs) But yeah, man, that that, that was going to be number one. It doesn't, that was going to be number one. There was no way. We're going to be talking about this for (laughs) a very long time. You know what I'm saying? Like Vince McMahon literally retired from wrestling, from like doing the day-to-day duties, from being head of creative. Having anything to do with WWE on that level is just mind-blowing. And it's always going to be something where like, damn, you remember when Vince McMahon was forced to retire because he he was doing some naughty, naughty things with the money with the money he was making <laughs> he's doing some very very naughty things man but yeah 2020 20 i can't even talk 2022 this year has been crazy for the wrestling scene so comment down below let me know i'm pretty sure i can guess which one would probably be the most uh controversial and shocking for you but comment down below let me know what was the most shocking and or controversial wrestling moment from this year in your opinion my opinion is it's 
it's gonna always be Vince McMahon stepping out because I never thought I would see the day he chest he willingly steps down let's, let's make that clear I thought it would always be medically he would have to step down because he just can't medically do it now it's I never thought it would be oh I'm gonna willingly leave the company that that was a shocker but appreciate all love and support road to 150k appreciate y'all kicking with me see y'all next week peace